Okay, so this is another question about electric forces. And the question is, if we have this Bohr model of hydrogen atom, what would the force and velocity of the electron, the force on the electron be and the velocity be? So let's just review really quickly the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. In that model, it's basically like a little mini solar system. So this is like the sun and these are like planets and they're orbiting in circular paths, moving at some constant velocity. And the interaction is not the gravitational interaction, but the electric interaction. So the electric force pulling this towards that and that makes it move around. This is wrong, okay? This model is not legitimate. Uh, there are a lot of problems with it once we get down to things. And that's the, the development of the atomic model is really complicated and, and interesting too, okay? But this is wrong. It's still fun to play with though. So I have a positive proton right here that's, let's say, stationary. And then I have a negative electron right here that's orbiting around. And uh, this distance R is, um, I wrote it down, let's see, 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. And so, of course, I have the Coulomb force, uh, the, the scalar value of this Coulomb force would be 1 over the 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2, over r squared. Now, I don't really need the vector value here. I just want to find the magnitude, so I don't have to write this as a vector equation. And of course, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the neg to the I always say negative 9 newton meters squared per coulomb squared. And that some people call that k. Okay. Uh, just to make it simpler to write down. So, we have everything right here. We can go ahead and calculate the force, right? I have the two charges. They're both the value of the charge of electron of E is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, where this is positive and that's negative. But it won't be an attractive force because they're, they're opposite charges. So I, let's just put in our values. Fc is going to be, uh, I'll write 9 times 10 to the 9th. I'll leave off the units. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th squared, because they each have that, uh, and then divide by the distance that's two of them, right? Divide by the distance squared, which is going to be 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11th squared. Now, this is really important that you practice this because I know that people make mistakes here, especially since you're squaring things with scientific notation. Uh, it's really important to use that scientific notation button on your computer. If you write 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th squared, it's going to square this, but not that. Okay, so be very careful. If you put it in a scientific notation, it'll square the whole thing. Okay, so if you do that, I get 8.2 times 10 to the negative eighth newtons. So the next question is, suppose it is moving in a circular orbit, how fast would it be going? So here I have the force. It's in that direction. Uh, and I know that if that's the only force, then F net, and let's call that the X direction. Let's call that F net X is going to be equal to this. Let's just call it negative FC equals negative M V squared over R. So V squared over R is the acceleration for an object moving in a circular path. Um, and it'd be accelerating in the direction towards the center of the circle. So they're both in the same direction, and that's good. So I just want to solve this for V. So if I multiply both sides by R, the, these cancel, and then divide by M, I get V squared equals FC R over M. Now, I'm thinking I did this wrong. I did this in my calculator, and I'm, I think I divided both sides. But let me, let's, just, let's just carry on, and then I'll check real quick. Okay. So then I just take the square root of both sides. And if you do that and you put in your numbers, I got 2.185 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. I'm going to check real quick. Okay, that's right. I did it. <laughs> okay, so, and this is really interesting because, um, one, it's kind of fast, but two, it is slower than the speed of light, so that's good. So, the, you know, this this model shows a lot of things that are nice about the hydrogen, uh, about 
real life, uh, but but we find out things that don't work. Uh, I'll tell you one of the biggest problems is if you have this negative charge moving in a circle, then it does have an acceleration, and accelerated charges produce electromagnetic radiation. So this would radiate, and then you would it would just collapse in on itself, and that doesn't happen. Hydrogen is stable. Okay, there you go. We'll do another physics problem later.